Hey guys, thanks for joining me, and if you like what you see, please subscribe. Hello peoples, welcome to Sharp Ends. So, uh, this is the Monterey Bay Sea Otter, which I'm going to do a disassembly of in preparation for my review. The Sea Otter is made in America by Monterey Bay Knives, designed by Ray Laconico, and uh, I think it's a collaboration with Sanford, is his name? Can't quite remember, but they're based in Monterey, California. I've actually wanted this knife for a very long time. This is an American-made model of theirs. Very simple-looking knife. Very elegant, too. Uh, Monterey Bay, uh, they also will do Chinese production knives. Like this ZDP-189 with 67 Rockwell Harness. It's sheathed ZDP-189. Very, very cool. And this is only like $200. So an incredible price for an awesome piece. Uh, they also have things like this Old Guard. I'm trying to get my hands on a Rosalinda right now. But very well, e um, easy, uh, what, what should I say? Uh, good priced knives with premium, premium materials from China, right? Uh, whereas they've also uh, sometimes collaborate with other people's, like this is the Mini Keen from Cabiso collaboration with Ray Laconico. You can see his name here on the spine. Very cool knife. I think this is under $60, somewhere around $50. It has a signature style, right? You can kind of see his signature style and the blade shape here and uh, the, the handle shape. Always very elegant. Anyway, this is American made. This was made in America by them in the shop, made out of Magna Cut. And it's got this machine finish across the blade and the scales. Very cool. So I'm excited to take this apart. I think it's going to be super easy, but I'm going to do this sped up. So what's going to happen here is in a second, uh, I'm going to get to it and I'm going to take it apart. And then when it's disassembled, I'm going to hold it open for you, show you what's inside, give you my thoughts on it. All right, here we go. Warp speed. <laughs> And we're back. That was extraordinarily fast and easy to take apart. Uh, we've got two barrel bolts here at the back. This is a frame lock. We've got uh, no steel insert, which is kind of a shame because the price of this knife is fairly expensive. Given that it's American made, you'd kind of want to see a steel insert here, but we got a ceramic ball here and you can see that the grease is nice and dirty, uh, which is fine. It is a free spinning pivot, which is not the best either in my estimation, not for $450. Um, the pin just fell out, which is fine. Having a, 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 the back lock pin be free is okay. Uh, the back barrel bo uh, bolts um, w were not free spinning for me, uh, which is good. So it was easy to take apart there. Uh, definitely have some grease in here. Um, it's thin behind the edge. I think the Magna Cut is heat treated correctly, although I don't know that for sure. But in general, uh, MBK is good about getting their heat treat done really well. This titanium, all the corners are smoothed over very nicely, and there's no insert. So all your all, the the entire handle is just uh, this tri entire scale is also uh, since it's titanium. There's no like liners inside of here. Uh, etched out or anything like that and it's running on phosphor bronze washers which is absolutely fine and uh, when done correctly to high tolerances with good washers uh, will run very very smoothly so I have no problem with that either and as they you know as it uh, as it becomes more broken in you'll find that it'll get smoother and smoother without affecting the lockup at all this is relatively uh, uh, narrow behind the edge, so it slices very well. Even though the spine is nice and thick and the point is pointy, it's absolutely fine. Now, I've uh, stropped this here and there several times, and it hasn't affected the uh, finish on this at all. I found that with Magna Cut, sometimes the finish um, can make it more rust uh, less rust proof. Maybe that's the best way to do it. Um, say it. So I'm just going to throw that out as a caveat is that in my experience, sometimes 
with some kinds of finishes, Magna Cut isn't as water resistant as it could, rust resistant as it could be. Uh, I have not found that to be the case with this finish. Although finishes like it in the Overland that was a Magna Cut that kind of looks similar, although different method in execution, um, did have a little bit of rust on it. Magna Cut's a good general purpose steel, but it's not the end all be all of human civilization. It does everything great, okay, but nothing absolutely great. So sometimes if you want a knife for different reasons, but anyway, it's good that this is a new standard. I like them. I like Magna Cut a lot. And I like how uh, they have only written it here on the inside of the blade here that says Magna Cut right in there. I don't know if this is focused or not. Because sometimes you have this branding on knives that's like a giant billboard, right? S45 VN USA, right? This is USA made. It doesn't say USA on it anywhere. It's very low key branding. Now, usually Ray has his name here or something like that. This only has the MBK symbol, very small, right there next to the thumb studs, which are great, by the way. I love these pillared thumb studs. One of my favorite ways of doing it. Uh, and then the, you know, the type of metal right there. So pretty cool. Um... So uh, this isn't my review. My review will be coming out in a day or two. I'm going to go ahead and put this knife back together again and oil it up. And then uh, I'll give you some final thoughts. So back to warp mode. Da -da -da! back. I am just fiddling around with the detent and the action here. No uh, blade play at all and back to perfectly centered as well. Feels really nice and there was a lot of dirty grease in there so I'm glad that I, uh, I cleaned it out and uh, get it running smoothly. I mean it was running smoothly before so. Uh, I'm going to go into this more in detail. Um, the quality of construction on this is high, but very, very, very simple. There are some th key things that he left out, which I think on a $450 knife should be there. But I think that there's economic reasons for that, given how small of an operation he is. Um, and also, you have to remember that he is doing like higher end stuff that is made in China as an OEM. Uh, but when it comes to making stuff in America at the quality he's doing in California, I think that there's a good reason why uh, it's going to be more expensive with less uh, flash uh, than, uh, you know, over there. I, it, it, it's, it, it's debatable. I'm going to go into it in the review. I think that this is constructed, however. The point of this teardown was, is it built well? It is built extremely well. Very easy to take apart, maintain, put back together again. Um, keep it simple, stupid is a very real design uh, element in the world. And I think that this has done a good job of that. Um, it's not over-engineered by any stretch of the imagination, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Thanks so much for joining me. If you'd like to support me, you can go down below, follow the link, and become a Patreon member. You can also like and subscribe or leave a comment. Leaving a comment really helps the channel. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time on Sharp Ends. Bye-bye now.